SJV Smart Junction Box. That is the interior fuse box that controls all the interior electricals. It's down here on the drive on the passenger side kick panel. You know, if, you, if the camera's picking that up, it's behind that door right there. And so, of course, they wanted to charge me. Uh, you know, the part is close to four hundred dollars. They say it might need to be programmed, and that's like a buck fifty. And then also the labor. It's probably gonna be like another 250 because they saying total everything is gonna be around 800 some odd dollars. <laughs> What is up ride lovers it's a beautiful day and i'm coming at y'all with another episode of for the love of rides and today we are going to well hopefully solve a problem that has been creeping up on me over the time uh with the mustang we're sitting in the mustang uh it's a little dark on camera because uh one thing i did order and i should have did this a while back i got another sunshade visor so y'all know i stepped in the car it's hot outside you know how you normally know step in the car or you open up the car and it's hot and the heat hits you in the face you're like oh god but uh yeah that didn't happen today because the temperature in the car is almost i would say probably about the same as outside and um maybe a little bit higher but i didn't open the door and the heat hit me in the face so i got a sunshade visor for the windshield and it's keeping the interior temperature of the car cool uh but yeah that's off topic i just uh, wanted to mention something about that that's pretty cool if you don't have one use one it keeps your car cool for when you get in on a hot day you don't have to worry about that heat hitting you uh but what we're going to be doing today uh like i said hopefully this will solve a problem that was creeping up and what that is I ordered a smart junction box, the interior fuse box for the Mustang. Uh, now a little background information on that uh, problem that I was having first, and I forget the chronology of it, what happened first, but there was my horn and then there was my power mirrors. Uh, like I said, I forget which one happened first, it was probably close in proximity to each other, but it's been a few years, it's been a while. Uh, at least like maybe four maybe five years the um, I'm gonna tell the horn story first because it seemed like that's just what I remember first the horn stopped working I was riding down the highway and it just well it didn't stop working it was overactive I guess you would say it would just like be constantly going and I wasn't pressing the horn I'm like what's going on so I shut the car off I was coasting with the car with the engine off the horn stopped i would crank the car back up either clutching it you know driving the stick shift those of you drive stick shift know about clutch starting the car put the key in a run position let the clutch out while it's in gear and the engine will turn over to start running again uh and i did it a few times so i clutched it i um turned it with you know started up with turning the key um so like two or three times maybe because I would start the car back up, the horn would have stopped, but maybe after five or 10 seconds, maybe 30 seconds or however long, it would start going again. Good thing I wasn't in city traffic, I was on the highway instead. That would have been crazy, right? But I pulled over eventually, <clears throat> and um, I pulled the relay, the, the horn relay out. The, the relay is located in the fuse box under the hood. And so I just pulled it, um, got to where I was going, um, kept it out, took it around my uncle's house. He checked it, you know, my uncle was an electrician. Talk about him in my other videos where I was installing the fog, the fog lights. But he, we put a jumper wire on it, heard the little click in the relay. It was like, okay, everything's good to go. The relay is working. Uh, so that's not the issue. There's nothing wrong with the relay. But I kept it out for maybe, I don't know how many days, a few days, maybe weeks or whatever. Eventually, it might have been longer than a week, but eventually I put it back in. And when I put it back in, the horn no longer worked at all. I could engage the horn with my hand like you're supposed to. There was no horn when you hit the lock button on the key fob twice, which to, you know, that arms the, the alarm system. You usually hear chirp uh, from the horn with that, but none of that will work. 
it was nothing so what I ended up having to do I had to MacGyver rig uh, my horn up uh, or a horn switch so let me show that to y'all right quick so yeah let me show y'all if y'all notice this MacGyver rig here and I had wired up a horn switch because it just wasn't working like it was supposed to you've seen this before in my videos that's what that's there for so yeah that's I have to use my horn because it doesn't work when you just hit the uh, horn in the middle of the steering wheel as, sh as it normally should be so that was the first problem um, then again like I said or again it could have been the second because again I forget which happened first that one that I just explained or this one that I'm getting ready to explain the next problem was my power mirrors stopped working uh, you know you got the power mirror switch uh, where you can change the driver or passenger side mirror by flicking it from one side to the other and then moving it that stopped working so I'm like okay well I just attribute it to the car getting old and this type of stuff happens to the old car you know my car right now it has what 278 280 miles 280,000 miles on it y'all know the story I've been through a couple of engines uh, you know all that type of stuff I think okay my car has high mileage it's just getting old and this is the type of stuff that happens with an old car uh, but that happened and then you know it was just going going on with life uh, adjusting my mirrors manually um, then let's see then came along a little later my um, AC blower and the interior AC fan blower that stopped working well it worked at first you got four settings on it you got the first one you got one two three and four uh, I think it was one and two might have still worked or maybe it was just one but basically the higher setting stopped working and um, so I'm looking at that like okay uh, well it still works it still blows the air into the cabin it's just not as uh, it, it doesn't heat the car as fast as you would like but you know for me I like riding with the windows down anyway so it wasn't really a big deal it has to be really 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 hot for me to use the AC really um, and I don't know maybe that goes back to back when you was kids you always was told you know using AC burns up more fuel uh, I don't know I guess that's true maybe maybe not somebody comment uh, whether that's true or not but yeah so I don't really use a lot of AC unless it's really hot uh, fast forward to a little over a year ago uh, y'all know you follow the videos about 14 months ago I did an engine swap uh, you know replacing the motor because the last one had uh, you know high uh, you know top end uh, tick so swapped the motor and then after I swapped the motor I noticed that none of the fans so it's not even the first one the first level fan said so that didn't even work so basically the fan mo motor is not blowing uh, cold air into the cabin the AC compressor works uh, so cold air does come in it's just like slow and you really can't feel it unless you're driving and you get on it and the RPMs go up so of course can't drive 80 90 miles per hour <laughs> all the time and you know it would be impractical to drive in a lower gear uh, you know to keep the revs high and uh, just to be constantly doing that uh, wear and tear on the engine and increase fuel consumption so let me plug up the camera before uh, it dies here yeah, there we go so what i did so with that i was like okay so it's hot but I don't use the AC so again I'm still just moving on with my life and uh, but oh and I so yeah next step in the story uh, a couple weeks ago basically what's today June 13th over the Memorial Day weekend uh, I realized that my at some point the power windows stopped working like my windows 
will not go up or down. Let me put the key in. So, right now the key is in the car, of course. Hit the buttons, nothing. The only movement you get is when you open and close the door. You know how it bumps up like a half, a quarter inch or whatever, where it goes down when you open the door and then it goes back up when you close it. That's the only movement I get right now. So of course, I know that the windows have power, but they don't, so the motor, I don't think the motor is bad, because again, why would it be both of them? But yeah, it doesn't work like it's supposed to. Leading up to that, you know, the, the days and weeks leading up to before they stopped working completely, I did have the issue where the auto um, up or down on the driver's side wasn't working. You have to actually hold it all the way um, instead of just bumping the button. The um, next thing that I noticed, of course, when I started researching and looking, because at this point, my windows don't go down my AC fan is not blowing this is more than just a minor inconvenience it's it's summertime it's hot can't really be driving or using my car going anywhere in the summertime with my AC fan not blowing and my windows don't go down so I started researching checking the forums and everything and what I found that situation where the auto button wasn't working you have to reset it you have to press and hold a button for it to go down, hold it for 10 seconds after the window is down, pull it to where it goes back up. Once it's back up, hold it for 10 seconds. And that's that uh, supposed to reset uh, the power window switch or the motor or whatever. But of course, that wasn't working for me because the window had completely stopped moving. No movement at all. So I figured, okay, um, at some point, I'm going to have to start driving my car regularly again because I'm working from home now, but eventually I'll be having to go back to work, back to the office. Uh, so I need to get this fixed before that time comes. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and just take it to the dealership. I actually, I bought me a probe trying to uh, find out, you know, test different things. Um, I did put power to the AC fan motor, so that works. I actually pulled it all the way out and there's three bolts under there it just drops um, right out once you well three screws there hex head screws and things like the eight millimeter or whatever uh, 810 something like that but it just drops out um, put power to it it spins so the AC blower motor is not bad it's just that it's not getting a signal to engage so took it to the dealership they told me that they believe I need a SBJ smart uh, SJB SJB smart junction box that is the interior fuse box that controls all the interior electricals that's down here on the drive on the passenger side kick panel you know if, you, if the camera's picking that up it's behind that door right there and so of course they wanted to charge me uh, you know the part is close to $400 they say it might need to be programmed and that's like a buck fifty and then also the labor is probably gonna be like another two fifty because they saying total everything is gonna be around eight hundred some odd dollars so I said you know what I'm gonna find this part went on eBay found one for uh, one thirty nine and change with shipping and everything I think it came up to like one forty eight so less than hundred fifty dollars I ordered it uh, it came in the mail yesterday and we're gonna work on it today. Hopefully that will solve our problems uh, Might not solve the horn because I think there might be some wires that got disconnected with the horn But hopefully the fan the power mirrors and the power windows will work So we're gonna go ahead and try to install it see if that fixes our problem All right, so here's what's about to happen first y'all you see uh, this cover. I've already taken that loose never put that back but See this little door here, pop that loose. You see the fuse box or the smart junction box is behind there. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull that loose. Um, this uh, this uh, plastic molding uh, has come out. As a matter of fact, pull on it. There she go, that comes loose. I'll take this up right here. 
you see moisture gets in there and I wonder if that moisture has anything to do with our with what caused our problem let's see we pull that up throw that in the back seat pop this off and that reminds me that moisture I'm gonna make sure that drain isn't clogged you know above the firewall because that will clog up and then water will just run down into this footwell here let's put that over here driver's seat so yeah that's how you access smart junction box you got picking that up there's a nut right there on a stud take that loose let's go ahead and pop that loose that comes out and maybe we might have some sign of moisture already but when you reconnect this you'll see oh you're here see. yeah hear them sounds when it reconnects yeah so you take that loose let me go ahead and grab me that socket so we can go ahead and unhook this all right so i got the socket let's go ahead and ratchet that off all right so it's loose now that uh nut on that stud was the only thing holding it uh, now just pop these loose uh, don't worry about mixing these up they are all different sizes so you know they mistake proofed it can't really mess it up because they will only go in they will only fit into the space that they're supposed to go into so pop all those loose Got these two down here. That one. This one is just like the one on the front. There we go. All right, so it's out, and already I can see. Yeah, it definitely looks like there's some moisture uh, damage in there. I wonder if this can be cleaned up and uh, say is that a prong or a piece missing there might be let's see yeah looks like it might be the one missing all right but yeah we can go compare it to the new one in the house see what we can see I do want to match it make sure I try to match it up as far as each individual fuse make sure they're in the same spot because you know with like 05 to 05 and 06 is some of the fuse positions I believe for certain uh, components like let's say your radio one might be here on 05 06 and then 07 08 it might be right here or vice versa so I'm just gonna compare them to make sure everything matches up but yeah, we're going to take a look. Alright, so everything is hooked up. We got all the plugs and harnesses plugged in. Now let's check it and see what we got. We got the key. Key is on. Alright, let's try the window. Woo! Window works, y'all. Auto down. Hold it. Oh, hold it. Let's auto up. Let's see, passenger. Woo! That one is down. Auto up. Hand is. Oh, it's working. All right, let's try the. Uh, 
Okay, so the AC is not working. Not yet. Wait, let me make sure it's plugged up. I think it is. AC fan is plugged up. But that, hold on. Okay, AC fan is not working yet, but at least I can put my windows down. Uh, wait, let's try. Ooh, the horn works, y'all. The horn works. Okay, what about these mirrors? Oh, my mirrors work again. Yo, this is so dope. It all works, man. Oh, I'm hype. I'm hype. Yes, yes. Hold up. I ain't got a lot of memory space left on my phone. I'm shooting with right now, but uh, yeah, it's working. I got. I'm gonna try to figure out, see what's going on with this AC fan. All right, so check this out. See how I taking all this loose? These clips on the side. I access the radio. Now I had, I had changed the radio out before. Ended up putting the stock radio back in. I replaced it with a Ford OEM navigation radio, but then I ended up putting it back because for whatever reason. It didn't really work properly so now i could have sworn and i thought i had checked and double checked this but i could have sworn that when i last put everything back together that i had plugged this up and i never looked again until now so lo and behold take all this loose and this plug is loose so now get in here and see that Plug it back in. <clears throat> Turn the key. We have air blowing, y'all. Wow. I All right, so what I was saying a moment ago, the um, my phone, I was recording with it stopped recording because, you know, the phone is sensitive phone get too hot it'll stop recording but yes plug that plug in i don't know how it was loose because i could have sworn it was plugged in maybe it wasn't in all the way maybe that's why i only had one speed before and then it fell all the way out and then i had no speeds that's my theory but now that it's plugged in air y'all So basically everything is solved now. Now that does leave the uh, new smart junction box. Here's where programming does come in. Because now, switch that off. Switch the, my key fob does not work. That's where programming comes in. So I am gonna have to program the key fob. Hopefully, being that this key fob is not brand new, I don't know, I forget, I don't know if I'll have to buy a new one i'm gonna try and see if the program um you know the programming procedure was basically you know putting it in the um putting it in the ignition and um turning the key in the on position like it's a sequence that you have to go through i'm gonna try that see if it works with this key fob worst case scenario i will have to buy a brand new key fob but other than that i can still of course unlock and lock the doors with the key key fob is just not working right now but i'll take that trade off temporarily because everything else works i'm hype i'm happy i feel like i'm driving a new car now but yeah let's i'm about to check this to see if it'll work that key fob thing all right so check it out key fob is programmed um to do this you have to put the key in the ignition and we had the program reprogram the key fob i put everything back together down there everything looks tight together but yeah since there that is a new smart junction box and good thing is yes i i did not have to buy a new key fob i just i was able to reprogram this key fob to the new smart junction box so you turn the key like this that's two three four you do that eight times on the eighth turn you leave it there the doors will lock and unlock and that's how you know it's in program mode once the once it's in program mode you just hit the button and that program you hit the button the lock button on the key fob and that is how you program it then basically you turn it back off and so i've already done it and but now 
look at the door over there is locked I hit the unlock button it unlocks lock button locks it again I'm not gonna hit the panic button I already hit the trunk button you can hear it but the trunk is already open so is it that popping the trunk button works well yeah, yeah I hit okay stop it yeah panic button works and I have horn with the panic button y'all so I can take this MacGyver rig wire out because <laughs> I don't need that anymore yeah I'm hyped now it's, I've been in a car it's still a little warm outside I've been sweating but yeah it's all worth it um I spent 117 out of 118 rounded up to the nearest dollar to get it diagno diagnosed I spent 139 and change, so 140. I think tax took it up to like 148. So, you know, 118, let's round it up and say 150. So, you're basically talking about uh, two, what's that, 278? Yeah, 278 to get it diagnosed and get the part. I did it myself, so I didn't pay any labor, and I know how to program a key fob. So I spent $278 on a job that was gonna cost me over 800 if I were to let the dealership do it for me. Uh, I'll get the exact number. I'll take a look at the paper that they, um, that they gave me uh, when, they were, when they quoted me a price to do the work, parts, labor, and everything. But yeah, it's less than $300 or over $800. Save myself over five hundred dollars so i'm happy everything's working this has been another episode of for the love of rides and i'll check y'all on the next video